So what you need to understand about liver cells is that they've got chemicals and constituents inside them that aren't really found anywhere else in the body in high levels. And if you damage that liver cell, it will release the contents into the circulation where we can detect it with a blood test. And if we see certain chemicals that we know are particular to liver cells in the circulation, that infers that there's a degree of damage happening to the liver. What we're having a look at here, I want you to have a look at this bottom one on the line. All the doctors in the audience know that ALT relates to liver health. Look what happens before a low-carb diet and after a low-carb diet. The liver gets healthier. Now, this is probably one of the most important tests I do in the clinic. We call it the glucose tolerance insulin response test. What happens is that you have a blood test and following that you have a drink. At half an hour, not shown here, one hour and two hours, we then repeat blood tests. But rather than testing only glucose, which is the standard test done, we also measure your insulin level. And this is really, really important because the pattern of insulin, the height of insulin, is very predictive of your future health outcomes. This was a really nice study published several years ago, and the main finding from this study was that the peak insulin, depending on whether it occurred at 30, 60 or 90 minutes, was very predictive of your chance of developing diabetes over the next 11 years. So in this first group, you can see your chance of becoming diabetic over 10 years, not so bad. What happens if you're a pattern four? Almost a one in two chance of developing diabetes. Understanding your insulin profile is essential to understanding your health. So let's have a look at real world patients. These are actual patient results. So we can see here, looking at the insulin, we have a peak of insulin occurring at the one hour mark. So we'll just ignore the glucose for a moment. So what pattern of insulin is that? That's a pattern three. Percent chance of progressing to diabetes over the next 11 years? 15%. What about this individual? Their insulin levels are not as high. Doesn't look as bad, right? But it's the duration and the timing and the peak which is also essential. We can see here, it's constantly going up. There's no peak in the first two hours. Chance of progression to diabetes in the next 10 years or so? About one in two. Now, we can also uh, get some other interesting insights from this type of testing in our patients. So this patient came to me and they were caught in a pattern of cyclical eating. So those of you who are now ketogenic, think back to when you used to eat carbs. Come morning tea time, you would hunt down a small child if you needed to to get some food. <laughs> so why is that? So something I see not infrequently in my patients is something called reactive hypoglycemia. So you'd think that if you stuffed 75 grams of glucose into the circulation, that your sugar should be high and should stay high. But not in everybody. In this individual, you can see they overshot. They released insulin, and that insulin overcorrected the sugar that was put in, so at the two hour mark, they are left with a blood glucose level of 1.1. <coughs> in this situation, you're gonna feel lousy. All the doctors in the audience are probably wondering what happened to this patient, they're fine, they did not die. 